Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about a new record. Now, not often do we talk about new records. Usually we're talking about the old, dirty, filthy records. And, you know, I've done a lot of crate digging lately. Um, I found an amazing, you know, probably 12 to 15 crates at a thrift store the other day that was, you know, new to me. So that was really cool to find. But, boy, you come across some nasty records and stains and mold and all kinds of disturbing little black hairs and stuff and you know one thing about vinyl is it does really attract dirt and grime it's uh takes some effort to keep them clean so when you come across a new record you know it's kind of nice to have a pristine clean record something you could you know be willing to eat off of so to speak um so but i don't usually buy a whole lot of new records i've maybe bought five or less brand new records it's so expensive you know you you know you got a comic store free comic day and they give you a free comic book. And unfortunately, you know, record store day isn't as cool to me because you don't get anything for free or even a discount. You just have a bunch of really pricey records that uh, are, you know, special uh, release for that thing. And, you know, I don't know about you, but I, you know, forking over 35 bucks for a record isn't something I can do very often. Um, but today, um, I actually found a brand new record for 10 bucks. So I want to tell you about that. Uh, it's this guy right here, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And I'll let you get a closer look at it. Um, so Second and Charles, uh, the store that we talk about from time to time, uh, had their holiday stuff kind of stashed uh, in a crate. And I was looking through it, and I saw that price tag there, 10 bucks, and it's brand new. And I'm like, it's still shrink-wrapped and everything. I'm like, well, that's pretty cool. So I, you know, I turned in some old books I didn't need anymore and got a you know, store credit, and I think it cost me a buck in the end. But I thought we'd look at it together. It's really cool, you know. They're nice and tight, you know, it's, you know, never been touched, and uh, this is really, really cool. So, uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, this is a soundtrack from the 1964 TV special, uh, featuring the voice of uh, Burl Ives there. Uh, lots of great music, and I won't even get into that as much as, you know, I really want to just review the record, um, and we'll listen to it as well. Uh, but this is a reprint of a DECA release from 1964, and what's really neat about this is it shows all of the old school uh, original printing on the back here. And I think the image on the front is original too. Um, but, you know, it gives you the listing of everything that's in it. But what's really cool is you still have the uh, information about, you know, the sales stuff we always talk about. This is a high fidelity record uh, for proper reproduction using RIAA uh, or similar record uh, compensator setting. Uh, so, again, this is marketing back in the 60s to people that still have, you know, old school record players that may not be RIAA compliant. Um, so it's kind of interesting. Um, and then it talks a bit about the sound quality and using a good needle and all that good stuff. And, um, you know, I've got lyrics on here. It's just a really cool thing, you know. And, um, yeah, so it'd be cool to open it. You know, 10 bucks is not bad for a new record because, you know, so many new records are, you know, 20, 30, 40 bucks. And, you know, it's just expensive. So let's go ahead and open it here. This is fun. You don't get to, uh, at least I don't, get to open one of the new ones very often. So when I do... It's kind of a special thing. So let's pull it out here. Got a typical new paper sleeve there. And a uh, classic DECA label. Let's get a close shot of there if we can. I apologize if it's focus is weird here. I'm dealing with interesting lighting. Uh, but yeah, um, kind of a shine to it there. Um, I wonder if the originals were like that. Uh, they seem more dull. I don't know if that's just due to age or if, if they always were that way. But... Uh, but yeah, really cool label there. Uh, you know, some new records, it's pretty common uh, that they come out of the box or come out of the packaging warped uh, because, um, you know, they're made fairly flimsy. This one, not so much. It's probably about 150 gram vinyl from what I can feel so far. So let's go ahead and take it out here. Never been played. Almost said virgin vinyl, but that's actually not true because you may or may not know this. Um, record manufacturers actually recycle old PVC vinyl uh, for records. And if you ever see an audiophile record, and it'll say on there, you know, featuring 180 gram, which is the weight of uh, virgin vinyl, what does that mean? Um, that means that it's made out of pure PVC pellets and no recycled materials. The reason why that's good, is, I mean, you can melt down the PVC and reuse it, you know, all the live long day. But sometimes bits of paper from the labels get mixed into that. So new records get pressed with little microscopic bits of that paper. And as you can imagine, that's not great to have, you know, on your record playing surface. But 
Will you ever have an issue because of that? No. Will you ever notice it? No. But is it truly there on a microscopic level? Yeah, probably. Um, so here we go. Beautiful record. Obviously, it's brand new, so it better be beautiful. Um, this thing has got a little bit of static, so it's already pulling in a couple pieces of dust. No big surprise there. And again, the weight is pretty good. Uh, looks like a good pressing uh, just by looking at it so far. We'll see how warped it is once we get on the player. Um, it's got a very sharp edge to it, uh, which is kind of interesting. I noticed the Lady Gaga record does that too. Uh, and I don't know if that has to do with the way they cut it or what, but that's kind of a sharp edge there. It's kind of an interesting thing there. But the, pr the quality of this pressing feels higher quality than that. So again, Deca release. Let's give it a little bit of a spin here. On the old collegiate. Go to the side one, that would make more sense. Right, let's see what we got here. Never been played before. You know Dashner, and Dancer, and Prancer, and Vixen, Comet, and Cupid, Donner, and Blitzen. But do you recall the most famous? Of all. It sounds good. I mean, it's, you know, given the limitations of a portable record player with a good speaker, but still portable, you know, it sounds very full and rich. It's definitely been remastered. You can see, see a little bit of a warp there, so we'll try to do some flattening of this record over time, but um, it sounds good. Now, here's something you may not know. Technically, and this is a pro tip for you, you're supposed to wash your records when they're brand new. And that sounds ridiculous. Why would you want to wash a new record? The reason is they are actually shipped with, and some of them have been, and you don't know if yours is or not, so you assume it is. Some of them are shipped with an anti-mold, like a mold repellent uh, coating to keep it mold free as long as possible. So you, you know, you technically have a coating on there, but are you ever gonna notice it? No, do I care? No, have I ever washed a new record? No, and I probably never will. Again, this is just for fun. I'm not, you know, trying to obtain the highest quality sound possible. Otherwise, I'd listen to a CD, and that ought to trigger some people. So if you want to comment on that, tell me why I'm wrong, go ahead and we'll uh, hash that out in the comments. Uh, separate discussion for a separate day. Let's go ahead and listen to a little bit more of this. I'm going to skip forward a bit. Different from the rest. Who decides the test? Now what is really best? We're a couple of misfits. We're a couple of misfits. What's the matter with misfits? That's where we fit in. Now for those of you, and I'm sure most of you, have seen this uh, around Christmas time. I'm a Christmas addict, so every time is Christmas time to me. Um, but this music is very nostalgic. So, and again... It deserves its own review just for the content, but I just wanted to review the actual physical record. Um, it's got quite a bit on here. It's got uh, 19 different tracks, so um, I believe there's even some just background music and stuff on here, so I'm excited to explore that. One thing that's neat about the Collegiate is it is a USB turntable, so I can hook it up and uh, archive it and do a you know, convert to MP3 or AAC or whatever. I'll probably do that with this because I misplaced my other recording of this uh, show, and I thought it'd be kind of cool to have. So I might do that and load it, on, lo load it into my Apple uh, Music Cloud um, and whatnot. So anyway, that's about it. Just want to show you that. Um, have you guys gotten good deals on, on new vinyl before? Let me know in the comments below. I'd be curious. This is probably the cheapest new vinyl I've ever come across, $10 for unopened brand new vinyl. Um, granted, it is off season, but hey, I don't care. Um, all right, let's go ahead and listen to a little bit more here, and we'll... Uh, Maybe Alright guys, that's good for now. Thank you for watching. Uh, please hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. Um, uh, again, thank you so much for helping us pass the 500 mark on subscribers. Um, if you have uh, anything you want me to review on the show, uh, you can mail me uh, records, tapes, whatever, CDs. Uh, I will do reviews on everything I get uh, until I get so many that I can't. But uh, at this point in time, I'm wide open. So go ahead and send me your stuff. Um, I have a P.O. box uh, that you can mail stuff to. And that is in the uh, About tab in my YouTube uh, channel information. So if you can't find it, just shoot me an email. 
or give me a comment and we'll figure it out. But uh, that's it. So thank you for watching, guys. Happy record hunting, and we'll see you next time.